Vincenzo Lancia was an interesting man. He had a very inquiring, alive mind. It was one man's idea of how a car should be, and he got it all right. Performance-wise, handling-wise in particular, and brake-wise, um, it was way ahead of the game. I think it's one of the biggest steps of advance in motor car history. He literally designed a shell of a, of a boat, turned it upside down and created this uh, um, monocoque body for, for the lander. Monocoque being meaning one, one frame, it was a one structure. The independent front suspension means you don't really need to slow down for corners, so you can drive the car on its limit everywhere because it holds the road beautifully. He had four-wheel brakes in 1921 and Rolls and Bentley didn't think about it until they'd seen how good these cars were and they had four-wheel brakes in about 1924 or 5. The Lancia Lambda engine is a, um, a V4, a very narrow, narrow angle V4. Uh, two litre capacity in the early ones went up to 2.6 in the later ones. Very advanced designs, all cast in aluminium, has a, uh, an overhead valve, overhead camshaft. It was all very compact and very well designed. Vincenzo Lancia was definitely a visionary because he didn't come from a motoring background, but he worked for Fiat um, and then he raced for Fiat. He was their top racing driver for a few years and then he decided he'd, you know, he could make better cars than Fiat could um, and set up on his own in 1906. He was a very clever employer and he always used the best engineers that were available to him. He was undoubtedly appreciative of other people's engineering ideas. But on the other hand, he was very much his own thinker and he was interested in doing what he thought was right and was best for the car that he was making. To go from um, a prototype to the first production car in 1922 into full production and then to make 13,000 cars within a span of 10 years is quite remarkable. With the Lambda introduction, it became a global manufacturer. Half of the people who went to see it at the first motor show it was displayed at, which was in Paris uh, in 1922, wouldn't believe it. They, they thought, this is amazing. The others said, no, this is the future. It became the standard to which other manufacturers aspired and compared their cars to. In relative terms to the cars of the 20s, the Lambda was a very easy car to drive. It was also very comfortable. But A to B, it would outperform a lot of much faster, sportier cars because of its inherently good road holding. If you like too much Renault Rosso, it was one of the safest cars that would look after you. All the nobility of Italy had one, all the famous people, Greta Garbo had one, Puccini had one. It's a delightful car to own. It's easy to drive, it's easy to keep. It, it is technically inexpensive to maintain. There isn't one single item. You couldn't say, oh, it's because it's got independent front suspension, or oh, because it's got a V4 in it. But the whole cocktail of things put together was the work of an artist. They really, really are a driver's car. Vincenzo Lancia's unorthodox engineering, and it was unorthodox at the time, certainly was a precursor to major innovations by every manufacturer. The legacy of the Lancia Lambda is really significant. It's formed the basis of modern motoring. 